My name is Hilary Prentice. And my name is Suzanne Dennis. And I'm Leah Ponton. So here in Totnes in Devon, we are a group of people who are interested in the in inner transition. The, so what needs to happen to us to change inside in order to make the changes we need to on the outside in the world to face what we're facing in this world. Um, climate chaos, economic upheaval, extinction of species. So we, we need to be able to face these things and often it's really, really hard to do that. We often want to avoid looking at them or we want to deny what's going on or not, not watch the news because of the despair or the hopelessness we sometimes feel or the anger sometimes and the impotency. So this can make us sometimes feel very stuck and paralysed. And so what we have been doing in Inner Transition is looking at how we can go through some of that emotional process and understand that we don't, that there is a way to be able to respond to the best that the world is in, in, in and be active around that through talking about the feelings that we have as well as what needs to be done on the outside. At the beginning of the transition movement, there was a sense that it would be very exciting to look at both the outer aspects of change, as Suzanne was saying, um, and at the same time to bring together all the people who were practicing meditation or psychotherapy or all different kinds of consciousness work um, together in one movement, which, which was relatively unusual. So, although there were many, so there would be a group set up to look at housing or econo economics. Um, the local pound, energy issues, many, many issues like that, we were specifically going to address the psychology and the consciousness and the spirituality of what, what has led us to create the mess we're in from that point of view and how can we support each other to change the state of consciousness which is messing up our world. So while some people say you change the outside, then we will change the inside, and some people say no, start with the inside, then we'll change the outside. And in transition, we've tried to put the two together within the one movement. So processes and emotional processes and sharing and meditation and feelings have been woven into the whole movement from the very beginning. Both the transition network, transition town top nest locally, um, but also the transition trainings that went all over the world in the early years of the transition movement. The two people who ran that, Sophia and Naresh, brought emotional and spiritual and sharing processes in from the very beginning. So I think it is many, many different movements are doing something similar around the world, but transition is one which is saying we won't get there without looking at the state of our consciousness and how it creates the world we're in, as well as we need to do the practical work. And that's what this group's addressing. And one of the ways we do that is run uh, groups in the community, and uh, Leah's been very much involved in that, haven't you? In fact, today we've just had a, a meeting about that and got together lots of people. you want to say a bit more about that? A group that we've, we've run in the past called Active Hope. So Active Hope is a book uh, by Joanna Macy and Chris Johnston. And we run, um, we invite the community, so it's like a kind of a book group, but it's an experiential book group. Um, and we've run four of those over the last five years, I think, mm. and there's lots of interest and people want more, but we wanted to see how that could continue sustainably, so we were looking at sustainability in a different way, but so trying to invite the community, how do we take this forward, who else can offer this group, who else wants to participate, who else wants to meet regularly, um, and that process is all about um, um, developing resilience to be able to make your particular offer out in the world. Like, what is my... Uh, it's about finding what your gift is and, 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 um, and finding ways of taking that out into the world. And it's a very supportive... 
it's supportive resource but also the group is very supportive and you feel like you're not on your own and the community is with you so that you can go out and, and, and do. You know, and it's, a lot of our work is about being and about being with the things that are difficult but also about how do we do in a sustainable way. We, we just had a big public meeting we were going to be held at the beginning of January about climate change, but in particular about what climate change denial and disavowal. In other words, how it is that people all over the world know it's happening but don't want to think about it, even though that's so important. And we actually had a, a psychoanalyst from London who's part of the Climate Psychology Alliance based in London. People getting together to think about the psychology of why we're denying what's happening. So we've only... That was meant to happen in January, unfortunately the speaker was ill and this was going to be a follow-on event. So we do all sorts of ways of confronting the psych, helping us to come together to say, how come we don't want to look at this? And community is one of the things that seems to make it possible when people don't feel alone. But another one that Joanna Macy, who um, Leah and Suzanne were mentioning that work is based on, she had the insight that ap apathy, apatheia means psychic numbing, back in the 1980s in the height of the anti-nuclear movement. Why aren't people doing something? So the whole basis of her work is, is, is really that we go numb and we block things out when it's overwhelmingly difficult. So how do we create spaces where people feel very supported and very encouraged and hopeful and then it becomes possible to look at the difficult material? So for example, as we did this afternoon, every Joanna Macy process tends to include practice of gratitude and of course things like gratitude and celebration are central in the indigenous cultures all over the world that know how to live sustainably. Isn't it? There's connection with the earth, there's celebration, there's gratitude. That's the kind of consciousness that we're trying to remember and recreate that is healthy and sane and allows us to confront the pain so that we don't go into the denial that you're speaking about. And our sequence of events we did last year was a whole series of things that we, about Earth stories, telling stories not just human-human, but remembering that ancient way of being where our stories are more about Earth and thunder and bird and rain and daffodil and the crops and the gods and the thank you. So we did many, many things, including projects in schools. One of us was brilliant at working in schools. So many children in schools all over Totnes wrote little Earth stories. They wrote their stories that wasn't about me and my mother and the telly. It was about, I caught a fish today. I was really glad I let him go. Was somebody mm -hmm. So that's lots of pieces. But how to deal with denial involves all the positive psychology that allows us to face the difficulties, I think, isn't it? I do understand very much what you're saying there because both of my daughters would say to me, well, Mum, you know, you so want to talk about all these things that make us feel miserable, you know. We've got our lives to get on with, you know, we've got this to do and that to do, and I'm going out tonight and no one wants to talk about that on. But I think that what's, what's really important for them is that someone is talking about it and they do know where to go if they do feel these things when they hear something on the news and so on. And occasionally they do say, I'm really glad someone is doing something about this. And, you know, not all young people are like your daughters or your students. Some young people are really in there as yes. well. That's a really important thing to remember. Uh, yes. I, I think many times a coming together is initiated very simply by one person who simply says, I really need to meet with other people, I'm really worried, what's it? is anybody interested? I'm putting out the call and, and we could have a cup of tea afterwards or have some fun. And, and people come. I've, I've had that experience many, 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 many times. That actually people are hungry to speak about it, given the invitation. Mm. Yeah. Isn't it? So it's actually people are crying out to talk about it. Even on the bus, if you say, what well, you're interested in this, they say, oh, I don't want to talk about that. I'm really worried about that. Mm. <laughs> and immediately start to speak about it. So, it's, but yes, as you say, feeling isolated makes us feel powerless, doesn't mm. it? And there's no point. And as soon as we come together and our hearts open to each other's pain and each other's joy, I think everybody feels stronger. And, of course, connection is the, is the, is the medicine, isn't it? Mm. 
if the illness is disconnection, then connection to each other, to our hearts, to spirit, to earth, is, is the medicine that we need. Mm. So it's essential. Mm. Yeah, and there was one scientist in our meeting this afternoon who said what was really important to him was to hear other people say what hurt, was hurting them about the way that our world is. Like maybe it could be what's happening to elephants or maybe the coral reefs or something and, and allow the tears to come up. And that gave him the sense he wasn't alone. He wasn't alone in feeling these things. And that's the power of community, mm. of having a group, having other people to do this with. Mm. And community grieving sometimes, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's people in the area running grief-tending rituals mm. and grief-tending workshops because so many of us are full of grief. And then we contract into ourselves, as you were saying. Mm. So there's many different mm. initiatives out there to support us to come together in slightly different ways to feel and mm. honour and love the earth and remember and then feel empowered to act. Yeah. Really? I'll tell you another thing that we do that Suzanne's been looking after for many years as one of the initiatives of we were called Heart and Soul and then we were called Inner Transition. We're called Inner Transition. It's like how do we, t how do we not burn out? How do we take care of the people who are very active? Um, and so there's been a lot more thought into not how the activists don't burn out. And one of the things we've done is um, Suzanne's been coordinating a mentoring scheme whereby for people in the community who are psychotherapists or counsellors mm -hmm. or your coaches, those kind of jobs, they offer free listening support to the key activists so they can mm -hmm. go along and process what it's like to be on the front line or working for the network or doing all these interviews because the people who of course who are very full-time activists are constantly flooded with impossibly painful information. And as we know, that then creates dynamics and organisations fail because people start, the pain gets recycled within the organisation, doesn't it? So one of the ways of trying to keep transition clear and healthy as much as we can is to offer things like burnout workshops, but also people have somebody they can go and offload to. And that's been running mm -hmm. for, I don't know, eight years or something yeah. now. It's well used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing that... We keep wanting other places to take it up. I don't think it has very much yet, but no. it's such a good idea, mm -hmm. Sophie, don't she? So that's some of what we do. Really?